What's up, y'all? It's me, Josh, from the Average Josh Podcast, and I ain't gonna lie to you, man. Today, I'm salty, man. Feeling a little sad, feeling a little down. Ah, things are going so great, man. Over the past few years, we got the Earl Spence versus Eudenis Ugas, Earl Spence versus Danny Garcia, Terrence Crawford versus Sean Porter, um, Deontay Wilder versus Fury again. We got the Anthony Joshua versus Alexander Usyk. We got to see Teofimo Lopez fight against George Cambosis in a pretty good fight, even though he lost. And Teofimo Lopez fight against Lomachenko. We got to see a lot of stuff. Devin Haney versus Oscar Valdez. I mean, um, Shakur Stevenson versus Oscar Valdez. Shakur Stevenson versus Robertson Corsacio. Devin Haney versus George Cambosis. So, you know, we, we got to see a few a few of these fights that we wanted, whether it be because they were big moments where the fighters were fighting for multiple championships. Oh, not to mention the, um, the Brian Castano and Jamal Charlo fight. So we got, we got some big moments, you know. Much more big moments within the past few years than I've seen in a long time in the sport of boxing. Things are finally starting to pick up. Um, it's not nearly to the point where it was back, you know, before I started watching boxing because, you know, in the, um, the 80s and the 90s, that was like the best time. But since I was born in 93, I didn't get to see any of those fights. And then, you know, most of the time when I was a kid, my mom wasn't about to pay for no pay-per-view. So if I didn't go to the library and just watch the fights on the library computer because we didn't have Internet, I wouldn't get to see them. But, you know, as an adult, you know, since I'm 29, about to be pushing 30. In a few months, you know, I've gotten to see a lot of fights just because I have the money and the time. Well, not really so much the time, but I have the money and stuff to actually um, afford to watch the fights and I have the means to watch them. So things have been pretty, pretty good. So when I was hearing all of these reports about Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence finally fighting, man, I was excited. I really was. For the past two and a half months, I've heard nothing but Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence. Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence. My phone is going off during that time um, at least maybe four or five times a day with notifications from all my favorite boxing channels talking about everything about that fight. From this is what the split's going to be and this person accepted... Um, um, zero down and 35% of the net and all these other things. So I'm constantly hearing it. It got to the point where they where they kept changing the fight date or they kept pushing the fight back to the point where I just I just started tuning it out. I was all like, all right, I'm pretty excited. You know, if they're, if they're negotiating this hard, I'm pretty sure this fight's going to happen. It would be like a terrible, terrible thing to the fans and to the sport of boxing for them to put all this hype into this fight just for it to not happen. And then recently, as we all know, Terrence Crawford pours out of the fight to go fight David Avenesian, a fighter who personally I've never watched fight. And I'm a pretty big boxing fan. I feel like if he was really that talented. Hold on one moment. All right. Just to find out that Terrence Crawford had pulled out of the fight to go fight David Admonesian. And I'm not going to pretend like I'm just some like super boxing expert because I'm not. I follow a certain amount of fighters. I follow most of the big fighters. And I follow some smaller fighters as well who people haven't heard of. But honestly, never watched David Avenesian fight. Not to say he's a bad fighter. I'm just not familiar with him. But at least he's more known than the platform that Terrence Crawford is going to be fighting on. Because he's fighting on something called Black. So when I looked up black, because I had never heard of it, the first thing that pops up was a uh, black dating site. So I'm like, so I was just extremely confused. I'm like, what the hell is black? Is it is it just some streaming service? There's a bunch of streaming services. Maybe it's just one of the big ones. I'm like, like I said, I, I'm 29 years old. I'm married. I got three kids. I'm maybe it's just like some streaming service that I've never heard of. Honestly, I never even got on Twitch until like. Uh, a few weeks ago, the first time I ever went on Twitch, I got on there, I looked at someone's stream, I didn't get the hype about watching someone play video games for hours, I couldn't do it, and I logged off. But at least I gave it a try. But at least I had heard of Twitch. I wasn't familiar of what Black was, so I looked up Terrence Crawford Black app, and it actually came up. It's an app called Black Prime. And then when I went, when I clicked on Black Prime, right? I went to their Instagram page to see how they're advertising the fight since it's going to be on their platform. 
And bruh, Black Prime has like 40,000 subscribers. They said that they signed one 16 year old boxer a little while ago. And the post that they have for the David Avenesian versus Terrence Crawford fight has less than 200 likes. I've seen girls, I've seen no name women with fat asses that I used to go to high school with post pictures on Instagram and get more than 200 likes. So it's crazy that this is the platform he's putting it on. So then I was like, man, I, I, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe it's something like Triller where it's like a new thing, but they have a lot of money being put into it. But then when I started looking into the company, I'm like, it doesn't look like they're putting that much money into this. So I don't see how it justifies him turning down arguably one of the greatest fights in in my lifetime that I would ever see if it, if it were to happen. To go fight David Avenesian, which no offense to him, I've just never heard of him, on a platform that no one's ever heard. And I'm a black man, you know, so I know about I know about all the black platforms. I know about BET and all this other stuff. You would think as a black man I would have at least heard of this. No, it's so it's it's such an obscure thing that even I've never even heard of the the platform. So when you're talking about someone like Terrence Crawford, who's going to put his fight on this platform, you would think he would like, honestly, he would he would get probably get better viewership just putting it on Twitch than putting it on this. So he walked away from negotiations, negotiated a whole nother fight while he was also negotiating with Errol Spence and then goes forward with that fight to go fight on some platform that no one's ever even heard of. It doesn't make any sense. Someone's going to have to make that make sense for me. I don't know. <sighs> but, you know, I don't know what to say, man. Like I said, this this, this isn't really one of my fun videos that I usually make. I usually make videos about topics that I'm really interested in. This is just more of a disappointing video where I'm just expressing my grievances with just the sport of boxing. You know, there's a lot of disappointment in the sport of boxing. As go disappointment, so goes the sport of boxing. But, like I said, I'm trying not to look too down on it because I've gotten a lot of good fights and I don't think Earl's gonna let us down if he does um on his next fight so I I, I pretty much believe that he's gonna he's pr he'll probably end up fight having a decent fight with somebody he, he doesn't seem like the type of person that'll go on black and fight David Avenesian you know he seems like he he does he seems like he's being me against tune-ups the same man who Almost died in a car accident, watched his Ferrari flip like God knows how many times, got out of um, the hospital, all these reports coming out saying that he was dead, then reports saying that he wouldn't walk again, then reports saying that he wouldn't fight again, came, through, came from all of that, all of that, got fake teeth and everything, got back into the ring, no tune-up, and fought Danny Garcia. I think that that man will give us a quality fight, but... You know, I wish Terrence Crawford the best. Hopefully, David Avenesian is just better than I think he is because I really don't have any opinion on him. I don't know if he's good or bad. Maybe he's like a hidden gem. Um, hopefully, he beats the hell out of Terrence Crawford, for real. You know, hopefully he wins. And then Terrence Crawford is put into a position like Keith Thurman where he can't just avoid fighters anymore and he has to make big fights. <sighs> but... I don't know. I'm not trying to be too salty about it. And even with Earl Spence, the only, uh, he's one of my favorite fighters, if not my favorite fighter. And the only video that I've done about him since I made this channel, because I've been doing it for two months, was basically a video that I that I made talking about how I hate duck-ass fans. Like, I hate fans who, who condone fighters ducking. And I was like, Earl, and one of my arguments was, I was like, Earl is my f favorite fighter, but the fact that he won't fight Keith Thurman, even though, um, Keith Thurman ducked him before. He just won't fight him just because he's all like, no, Keith Thurman ducked me, so I'll never fight him. I always thought that was dumb. I'm like, Keith Thurman's desperate for a fight. You know that he'll fight you, so fight him. You know, because, like I said, even though he's my favorite fighter, it's not like I know this man personally. I don't care if he personally doesn't like somebody. I still want him to fight. But it's still better than him doing what Terrence Crawford did. That would be the equivalent of him uh, uh, negotiating... Um, a big fight like let's say that he was negotiating a fight with Keith Thurman and then halfway into the fight he's all like psych I lied to you I lied to the fans I'm I'm gonna go fight shit I don't know Custio Clayton and you're like what the fuck where did that come from I'm gonna go to fight Custio Clayton on some obscure 
web website that you've never heard of. I'm gonna walk away from all the money from that Keith Thurman fight. I'm gonna walk away from all the fans who want to see it. Now I I, I vehemently believe that Earl Spence would hurt Keith Thurman and probably stop him or at least beat him pretty good because Keith Thurman is very susceptible to body shots and Earl's an expert in body shots. Um, Keith Thurman doesn't seem to be the same fighter that, that he once was. He's still a good fighter. I think he's extremely underrated, but he, he's not the one time. He's not the one time knockout puncher that he used to be. He's not. He doesn't have the punch resistance, especially to the body, as you see that Mario Barrios was able to hurt him. So I do believe that Earl Spence would beat him. But I still want to see that fight, you know, not nearly as much as I want to see the Terrence Crawford fight. But if he go, goes from out of 147 without fighting Keith Thurman and moves up to 154, and I, I expect um, Keith Thurman to move up to 154 because if he doesn't, he's going to really become a gatekeeper because Virgil Ortiz, um, Jerron Ennis. At one point, I was thinking Connor Ben might be in the mix, but we saw how that went out. Uh, they're coming for Keith Thurman. So he might have to move up to 154 and try to, you know, see if he could beat um, Danny Garcia again. Um, but I don't know. There's, there's a lot of fights that Earl can make, and I'm pretty sure he's going to make a fight that the fans want to see because he actually cares about what the fans want and he actually cares about making big fights. He just doesn't give a fuck enough about what we want to fight Keith Thurman. But I can forgive that. I can forgive that if he fights, you know. Um, well, I maybe... Well, Stanley Onis is a, is a decent fighter, and he would promise to fight him after Ugas' fight. Or I could forgive him if he moves up and he fights someone like Brian Castano, or if he fights someone like Sebastian Pandora. I can forgive that. I can forgive him not fighting Keith Thurman. I don't like it. He still should. But, you know, I can let it slide. But I don't know, man. This is just the, this is like the most, like, random, like incoherent video I've ever made just because I don't really have much to say about this other than I'm disappointed. Maybe I'll make um a tier list, a fantasy tier list of all like the the of or maybe just like a top 10 fights that I would want to see out of Earl Spence. Since I know he'll probably give one of them, I'll just say my top 10 and put them in order for the one that I want to see most to the one that I want to see least. But you know there's like there, there's at least 10 fights between 150 um, four and 147 that he could possibly make that would still be decent fights and pretty and decent competition. But the one that everybody wanted to see, the best competition, Terrence Crawford, for whatever reason, doesn't want to fight him. <sighs> but you know what? And I know a lot of people are blaming Errol Spence or blaming... Um, they're trying to blame um, Al Heyman and stuff, too, because a lot of people just don't like Al Heyman. They don't like Earl Spence. They don't like the PBC. I understand that. But Terrence Crawford had these same type of problems when he was with ESPN, too. Like Everyone was talking about Bob Arum, and a lot of people don't like Bob Arum because he's a controversial figure as well in boxing. Kept saying over and over again how Terrence Crawford was a nightmare to negotiate with. Terrence Crawford, he wants approval over everything. He wants to do this. He wants to do that. He does. He goes above and beyond to make everything difficult. And we've all worked with someone like that. Someone who's just like every single thing is just extremely difficult and i wanted to give terrence crawford the benefit of the doubt i wanted to be all like maybe bob barham is just saying that because terrence crawford doesn't want to do business with him anymore maybe that's just what it is but then it turns out from the way that he's ne been negotiating lately and from the way that he's that really he couldn't find any other better platform to put his fight on other than black prime which has 40 instagram followers and put a post that has less than 100 likes on it on instagram he couldn't find anywhere else to distribute his fight. Maybe he is extremely hard to deal with. And from the reports coming out about this Earl Spence um, versus Crawford negotiation, maybe he's just one of those people. One of those people who argue over $5, even if it costs them a million dollars. You know? <sighs> like the um, like the equivalent of like a male version of those um, bridezillas. You know, like those brides who want everything to be perfect in a wedding and just make the thing take way longer and make it way more stressful than it needs to be to the point where a lot of people just don't want to deal with them. That's kind of what Terrence Crawford is looking like. But like I said, I don't know the man personally. Hopefully that's not what it is. Hopefully it is just a misunderstanding. Maybe he just needed a tune up um, before he goes in there and fights Earl, which is fine if he would just say that. He doesn't have to stream the entirety of the boxing community along to do that. But, you know, it's whatever, bro. It's whatever. Salty. Salty.
<laughs> I'm gonna go cry in the car. Bye.